Yes, sir. It's about that time. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's the weekend. I want to get something to sip on, review, and share. And I just don't know what I'm in the mood for. I, I'm looking at my cognacs, but I think I want something smoky. I see all these these 10.3s on deck. I got uh, Lafroy's, that, that new Cardia's. I just got that. But yeah, as you can see, I just got this not too long ago. This 4.1 Black Art is in the building. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The old school Highland Park, and you can see right here the Kill Curran. Look at that, 15 year all the Rosa wood. This is a very rare bottle, very rare. And as you can see, what it says, number of bottles 280. Well, your boy got one of them, yes, sir. I got this one uh, almost not quite, but almost a year ago. I haven't even opened it. I was like, ah, eh, I'm scared to, but anyway, I want some on the smoke tip. I got the Octomores, I got my Brutalities on here. What I want, what I want. Let me bring it down here. Bye. What we got right here? You know what? What we got down here? Let me bring it down here. Show the bottom shelf some love. Yes, it yes. You know what? Oh, I think it's about that time for this art bag. Bye. What we got? The core wrecking. Yes, sir. Cash strength, as you see, sitting at fifty-seven percent core wrecking. Yes, it is. But now that I'm thinking about it. I actually look over here and I see. I got some samples from uh, one of my one of my viewers and stuff, so we, I'm gonna have to go ahead and do this too. So while I'm at, we got the Arbag Supernova Committee release, 53.8 percent. Yes, it is. This is a 2019 for the Supernova, and I have the Arbag Black Committee release, 50.7 percent, and that one is a 2020 release. So you know I haven't even opened these yet. So I'm gonna do these two. I'm gonna match it with the Core Reckoning. It's gonna be one big fun-filled Arbag day. Yes, it is. Let's go. What's good, baby? You know what's up. Trams on deck. You see what time it is right here, baby. It's an art bag day today. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, this one right here, I'm going to be honest. We're going to put it a little closer to me. This one right here, I was looking forward to doing this, man. I'm an art bag guy. Um, it was one of my favorite decisions. But anyway, but this one right here, the core reckoning. So is it, is, this is part of the core of range of the art bags. I think they have the 10-year art bag, uh, the Core Reckoning, the Uga Doll, which I recently reviewed, and the NO. Those, I may have missed one, but it's, those are like four of the core uh, art bags. So I say core, meaning that you generally will find those at any, you know, uh, liquor store that has art bags. You at least, 10 is always usually the, the easiest to find, the art bag 10. And... This one here is you won't see the core reckoning as as plentiful as you were the ten, but usually the ten and the oogie I usually see more than any other ones. But um, so like I said, I, I had this core reckoning. I had this particular core reckoning for probably maybe four or five months now. Got it from my guy Ryan and Carlsbad. I think I only paid for like the core reckoning goes around I don't know seventy five eighty bucks in that in that bar. So I, we'll say eighty bucks. I paid about eighty something bucks for this for the core reckoning. Now, as I said, I spoke earlier, we have the Supernova right here. So the Supernova, this is the 2019 release. This one right here, and as I talk to you about, I'm gonna open it up and pour a little bit. I'm gonna have it open it up as I, I'm gonna start with the core record. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get with these two in later. But anyway, the Supernova is actually the 2019. I don't know if they still currently do the uh, Supernovas uh, still releasing as of today in 2021. Uh, but uh, I will say that the supernovas were kind of heralded as sort of like the the uh, similar, or I would say the counterpart to the Octomore. If you see my other reviews, I love the Octomore. So the supernova, this is like the R bag version that the equivalent of the Octomore. So the Octomore is made by Brutalides. Supernova is made by obviously R bag. So I haven't had a supernova before, but today that's going to change today. And this one here. This is the Art Bag Black Committee release 2020, sitting at 50.7%. Uh, I have never had this before either. So this one right here is going to be like an early Christmas, or I would say a late Christmas present for your boy. So I have, I've heard good things about both of these, and I'm going to find out for my damn self in just a little bit. In just a little bit. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm going to find the hell out. Uh, but these right here, they're all peated. And the Black Committee release, like I said, these... Those are rare releases, same as Supernova. So, Core Reckoning, you usually could be able to find, but these two, not so much. So, you're going to have to work. So, I think the uh, Supernova, 
in the ballpark goes for I'm keep in mind, I'm talking about primarily the second market anywhere from like 250 and up in the uh, black committee release that range as well usually that's in the 150 to 250 range but that can that can shift too and the older it gets like the 23 release so you it's, obviously this was a year ago this release so as the time goes the price is going to inflate. So when we go to hit 2022, if you try to find the black committee release of 2020, which was last year, it's going to be even more money. So this is going to, so this black committee release price is probably going to fluctuate because it's a limited release, same as a supernova, and you're not going to find it. So right now you could probably get it cheaper than if you try to get it a year or two from now. So anyway, both of these bottles are in a 150 nut club. So the supernova being the, even the more expensive one, because it's like I said, it came out two years ago. And uh, like I said, those, those are not going to be easy to find. And when you do find them, get prepared to pay. It's, and that's not going to be no fifty nine ninety nine special. No, sir. You're going to come out the bank for that one. So luckily, uh, one of my uh, viewers uh, hit me up. He hit my Instagram, and he we kind of did an exchange. So I exchanged him some things that I reviewed that he was interested in seeing. And I vice versa. So he sent me some things that I was interested in. So I think he, he wanted to try the... Uh, uh, the Buna Hobbin PX, I gave him the Octomore and forgot the other, something else I gave him. And then he gave me these two plus the uh, Lagavulin. So anyway, I had this, thought it was time for a review. I'm going. To, I'm already doing the art, the core reckoning, but I figured I might as well add these two to go with it. So pretty much, we're going to start with the core of reckoning. Then we're going to hit sled to the Supernova and the Black uh, Committee release. And just so you know, they, they, uh, they have, uh, our bank has a, a Black Committee release 20 year uh, anniversary. That one is not the same as this. So the, it's, it's actually the same verb, but the only difference is it's, it's a black committee release 20 year, uh, I think it's called uh, 20 year. So that one is a 46% and this is 50%. So a lot of times if you look it up online, if you go and ask the store, they get that confused because the word, verbiage is pretty much identical. So, um, but this one right here is not the 20 year anniversary. It's the black committee release of uh, 2020. And it's, it's better when you look at the ABV. That's how you kind of know. So this ABV is sitting at the 50.7%. Uh, and the other one is 40, I want to say 46% of that nature. So anyway, um, I'm going to start with this core of reckoning. This is, a, they're all non-age statements. So the core of reckoning, I'm not exactly sure. I believe this is ex-bourbon cast in here. Um, but non-age statement, like I said, I paid roughly like $80, $80 for it. This one is a sweet peat and meat type of thing. Um, and look at the color on this. The color on this is very light. It's kind of a light. So I would say it's almost like an apple juice's color, very light. And uh, on the nose, we're going to jump and see what we got. <clears throat> All right, now let's see what we got. Just as I suspected, you, I smell meat and peat and smoke. I love it. it, it well, I, I, something about these noses on art bags, it makes me hungry. It has a, for me, it has a food factor in it. These are bags, the ones, oh man, I, I love the food factor. Like I said, I'm going to have to be getting my eat on real soon after this. But right now, just think of a mesquite, like a, almost like a ham, bacon, pork smell to it. A little bit of oak. I'm not picking up any fruit in there, but I'm, I'm picking up smoke, meat, wood. Like I said, just that mesquite, ham, <sighs> bacon-y kind of vibe on the nose, man. And even though it's fifty-seven percent, it's not like like uh, like a straight uh, killing my nostrils. It's, it's it's very very approachable. I've got my nose deep in this glass. It's not burning me at all. But yeah, it smells like like you just like you just smoked you some goddamn bacon and ham. That's what it smells like. Mesquite wood, the smoke, the meat, cooked meat. That's what. So if you, if you had a smoker and you, and you put your nose and you in it after you die down an hour or two later, that's what I smell. Very good, appetizing, pleasant smell. Yes. That peat and meat, mm -hmm. light amber, not age statement, core reckoning. Ah, let's go. Mm. Okay, he would have come on here and start kicking me right now. Okay. I feel you. Okay. Well, I definitely pick up ash. Campfire ash on this one. But as always, the first sip accentuates the palate. Then I jump on the second sip to really deepen, get deep in there and really pick up the notes a little bit better. 
That being said, sip number two. This one, you definitely pick up Campfire Ash on this one. Campfire Ash. A little spicy this to it, too. Like a hint of like a, like a little hot sauce or something. And I pick up just a fade hint of, of some oak. But the, yeah, smoke, oak. And that, like a little bit of, of like a warm spice I pick up like that almost like a, not a rye but like, I would say a, like a spicy bourbon but I wouldn't quite say rye though but um the, the heat is definitely prevalent I can I can I can pick it up it's not bad I'm gonna add just a douse of water to it while I'm talking to see if it changes anything but um I don't pick up any sherry influence unlike the Ugadol, which I did not too long ago Ugadol has a very rich sweeter um to me a little bit more thicker uh sherry flavor to it because obviously that's that's what it's managed and this one you don't pick up the sherry on here so for me you get more it, it, like the smoke factor kind of lingers in more so on this one than it does the uga dog so if you're a peat head and you like a real like a fat like a peat monster you're definitely going to gravitate to this maybe more so the uga dog because uga dog is a little bit more sweeter definitely sweeter than this one this one's definitely you pick a more uh, smoke campfire ash on this one. I'll try to speed a little bit through because I got a couple more to review. So let me go ahead and take this one. This is the core reckoning with a little bit of water. Very similar. Heavy campfire ash. So certain things that are peated, you get more, sometimes you get more wood, like a mesquite wood. Like, for example, 10.3. I re I don't pick up much campfire ash on, on, on a 10.3 Optimore. I pick up more of the mesquite wood. This one right here, you pick up campfire ash. So very heavy, prevalent campfire ash. Heavy on the smoke, on the oak. You get just a very... Uh, faint hit, a I would say, just a little bit of vanilla, very little. We get some spice, like a like a like a more of a uh, like a spicy spi uh, spice on like, like a rice spice, a little bit. Oh no, it's not bad. I enjoy it. Uh, the meat factor is, is is still prevalent as well. You get just a little bit of like a, I would say a faint hit of pork on on the on the uh, palate. I pick up more of the pork smell on the nose than I do the pork taste on the palate. So. All in all, uh, Pete has that love the campfire ash are definitely going to lean towards this. Um, for me, $80, um, I, I definitely enjoy this. So for me to rate this 1 to 10, 10 being the best for me, Core of Reckoning by Art Bag, for me, I give this a solid 7. Uh, it's, a, it's a 7 for me. Um, I enjoy it. It's definitely enjoyable. Uh, I, I will say I tend to like a little bit more sweet and peat more. So this is more peat than sweet. It does have a little, little bit of sweetness, but not much. So this is more of a peated version. Uh, I, best thing I can tell you is if you ever had a, um, a Lagavulin 12, as I was, a Lagavulin 16 year, but I think it's 43%, this is a higher proof of that. So to me, it has some similarities. I'm not saying it's dead on, but if you like the Lagavulin 16 at 43%, just, just imagine that on a uh, like a higher ABV. That's 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 a little bit of a similarity. I'm, I'm not saying it's dead on, but a little bit of a similarity. So anyway, I give this bottle a seven out of a ten for me. Uh, I like the Ugadol better because I think it's, it's it's more sweet and peat there, and uh, I love the sherry influence of the Ugadol. But I still like the Core Reckoning as well. So for me, Core Reckoning, seven out of a ten. And I and that, and that's all around because it's not hard to find. And it's relatively priced, so I don't. I'm not gonna take it up or down on that. So I, it's a solid seven out of a ten for me. The Art Bag Core of Reckoning. Now, that being said, let me move this forward here. We've got the Supernova, and we have the Black Committee release. Now these right here, as I stated earlier, are limited release. You're not gonna find this at every single store, so you got to do a little bit of uh, prying and looking and searching. And you be like I said, you got to put the uh, the wallet for this one or the purse because 
like I said, if you could find a Supernova 2019 on the second market, which is primary, I mean, I'm not saying you can't find it at retail, but I think those are going to be even hard to find. So let's just say we're going to be looking at the second market. Second market, cheapest rate that you're probably going to find is probably 250 and up for the Supernova. So, and that's probably 250 is, is on the lucky end. On the second market, you probably, because it, as I like, keep mine, it's two years ago. So as we keep going a uh, year and years ahead, if you find it a year from now, it's going to, it's going to fluctuate even more. So, so both of these. <clears throat> so I would say, like I said, this is Supernova is probably going to run you like 250 and up. This is going to run you at least right now, 150 and up for the black committee release. It'll probably, I'll probably be a nice with the 150. Uh, so these guys right here, like I said, was as a, a uh, sample gift. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying both of them. I heard great things about both of them. So the Black Committee release, I'll, I'll, I'll put them side by side. You can see the color. The colors are, are very similar. I would say that the black is slightly, I don't know if you could, from the light, you can slightly, sl very slightly uh, uh, darker than the Supernova. So, but they're very, they kind of have some similarities in, in uh, color wise. So I'm going to take one quick sip of water. Close the palette. Then we're gonna jump on the. I'm gonna start from uh, closest to me, and then we're gonna smoke, uh, nose and taste it. So the Black Committee release 2020. You can see the color. Like I said, uh, it's kind of not too far from the um, core record either. It has a very a light amber color. Yes, it. Yes, yes, it. Yes. Let's see what this nose has to offer. Definitely much sweeter on the nose than the core record. Well, this one, I don't really, it's oddly enough, even though it's Arbeg, Arbeg's known for Pete, but only on the nose. Black Committee release 2020. I'm not picking up a heavy Pete or a heavy smoke. Uh, on, it's not prevalent on the nose. I pick up like a peach, a little pear, just a little bit of wood, a little bit of, it's like a little bit of vanilla. You know, believe it or not. On the nose, it smells more like a, a of a I would say a, a fruity or a sweeter bourbon than it does a scotch, a, a pita scotch as what it is. So if I didn't know any better, I would like, man, somebody you got some sweet bourbon up in here. If you, did, if you just told me to smell this and didn't tell me what it was, I would think this was like probably either a, a sweet bourbon, or I would think this would be a like a sherry or a, um, a fruit uh, uh, flavored uh, uh, scotch. But I wouldn't think this is a Peter Art bag. So, <sighs> all right, let's go palette. Let's see what we got. Mm. This is very, very smooth. Fifty percent. This thing is smooth, man. You would think it's 48% ABV. There's no burn, no bite. It's not even hot. And you definitely, if you pick up on, on the finish, you pick up a little bit of the of the smoke. But on the entry level, you pick up a lot of those, the fruits that I smell, like the apple, the, the pear, a little bit of vanilla. And then when it comes down, that's what it's on the entry level, you get the fruity notes. Then as it finishes, that's why I pick a little bit of the wood and more so the campfire or the smoke on the bottom end. But it's not, it's, it's like the campfire ash is way muted compared to what it was on the core of Reckoning. Like the campfire ash on the core of Reckoning was probably like a eight and a half, nine out of a 10 on the campfire ash meter. But this one, it's, campfire ash is more like on a four or five. So, you know what I'm saying? You get a lot of the fruit. You get, you, you really, I only pick it up on the finish, but I only took one sip. So let me take one more sip. That's nice. That's a sweet and Peter right there. Sweet and Pete. Entry level, you get that fruity notes, the apple, a little bit of that pear, a rose into the campfire on the on the finish, the mid palate, you pick up a little bit of that wood. So I get the fruit factor, a little bit of that, the oak, a little bit of vanilla, 
and then you get the campfire ash. And this is kind of like I said, the campfire ash is it's probably like sitting at a five out of a ten as far as the how 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 um, camp, you know how smoke or how peated it tastes on the palate. And it's similar to what it tastes on, on the smell on the nose, because nose I didn't really pick up the campfire and peat, but on the palate I pick it up more so. But but it's mostly on the finish, and it's not as heavy as as the core reckoning. So all in all, that's a good dram, man. That's a good dram, um, and it, for 50, 50 uh, eight, uh, percent alcohol. It, it sips very, very easy. You know what I'm saying? It's no burn, no bite. It's not really hot. I didn't even, I didn't really even need to add water to it. It was, it was an easy sipper, yo. So, Black Committee release, 2020. I liked it. Definitely enjoyable. Um, if I had to rate that one to ten, ten being the best for me, Dram's on deck. Black Committee release. <sighs> on just on just judging on taste, I'll probably give that probably eight out of ten. I like the fruit, if you haven't tell, I like more of the sweet factor, properly balanced and infused with the smoke. And I think this does it pretty well. Um, like I said, 50% has some umph, but you don't t you don't feel it, and you damn sure don't taste the umph. It, it sips very easy, and I like that. Now, it's 8 out of 10 on taste, but if I had to, to uh, factor in the price and availability, I'm not going to do a 7.5, because obviously it's limited release, but I'm not going to dig it too much on limited It's limited release, so you know you're not going to get you know, uber amounts of it. So that's understandable. The price, if you can get it at retail, it's not bad. I mean, if you can get it at retail, I think retail, if you just bottom shelf retail, you could probably get it for 150 but them days, I don't think you're going to find it there. But, uh, so yeah, all around, I knock it to, I put it seven and a half, but uh, on taste factor alone, excluding, you know, the uh, the price and availability, it tastes alone, I give it an eight out of a 10. It's a nice, good, sweet and Peter. Like I say, if you if you like the the fruit factor with the smoke, campfire ash, little bit, and then you know, like I said, a little bit of vanilla, it, it balances out pretty well. I enjoy it, so I like that more than I did the core of reckoning personally. Um, Black committee release. So that being said, take one quick sip. We're gonna jump on uh, Supernova, which is one I'm really looking forward to. And why that is is because this is kind of like. Uh, almost like the op, not the opposite, but the error to the, I guess, the Arbeg's uh, version of the, uh, uh, obviously, the Octomore. I love Octomore. So I want to see if Arbeg does a, a, a good job on their version of what we would call an Octomore. Octomore is one of my favorite spirits I've ever had. The 10.3 is. The 10.3 oh, is sensational to me. Um, so the Supernova 2019. I want to see how good, how it stacks up. Is there similarities? Is not like I said, all Octomores are the same. Just like all Supernovas, I'm sure it's not the same. Even though I've not, I've, this is the first one I've, I've ever had. So I'll let you know in just a few minutes. But I'm definitely excited to try the Supernova to see how it stacks up. So it's at 50. Again, was 53.8 percent for the Supernova. Yes, it is 2019 version. And uh, let's see what we got on his nose. This has a very similar nose almost to the Black Committee release. Why I pick up fruit and in, in, uh, influences. Like, I pick up a pear, pick up vanilla, a little bit of honey, and some smoke. But the smoke is not, you know, very prevalent. It's not super high. It's, you know, it's, even though it's 53%, it's, uh, it's not, it doesn't smell like real aggressive in your face with the peat or the alcohol bio. So, yeah, I, you pick up a little bit of, like I said, fruit influence, like a pear. The smoke, vanilla, and oak. That's mainly what I pick up on. I don't pick up much meat factor on this. I don't, I'm not picking up meat. But as, as I did with the core record, and I, how you, I had like a meat factor pork. This, I don't pick up that on this one. Like I said, just more of the, a uh, little bit of the peat smoke, the oak, and that, that pear smell with a little bit of vanilla. <sighs> yeah. Got some similarities on those as with the Black Committee release. And as you can see again, I'll show you again. The color is very light color. It's not an age statement, so I don't know the um, that portion of it. But I was told that Supernova has some ex bourbon uh, barrel influences. That it's alleged. It's not I haven't confirmed that. So, but that's what I was. Uh, that's what I heard. So, and also I don't think I mentioned it, but um, for this uh, Black Committee release, 
That one's allegedly have uh, uh, Pinot Noir, so it was Asian, uh, uh, New Zealand Pinot Noir uh, wine cast as well. So that that had, that's what this was partially aged in. Allegedly. So anyway, back to Supernova. We got this uh, nose down. Let's see what we got on the taste. Let's go. So the first sip, I can tell you that Supernova is my favorite out of all three. Just on, on the first sip, I can tell you that. It's in now. But you know, I'm going to take this other sip in just a second. That's right. But that one right there, it sips so easy, just like the, the Black Community release. But the one thing I, I say I like probably more about the Supernova than this, I pick up more honey vanilla. It's very prevalent on the mid palate. So I get the fruit, the honey, vanilla, and then you get a whisk of the smoke all throughout. With it is balanced though. Sometimes when I sip something I did with this, I I got hit with the fruit up up close uh, on the front on the entry level of the black committee release. But as I went to the mid palate and went down the hatch is when I picked up the smoke. With the supernova, you pick up the little bit of the, the soft, light smoke all throughout. For something that's extremely peated. I don't know the I don't know the PPMs on this uh, supernova, but I will tell you that something that's very peated. It it it's the, I kid you not. It's so soft, man. It's just not aggressive. It's not like some of the Lafroids are just medicinal, smoky, just all up in your face. Don't get me wrong. It's very it's very peated, but it's 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 balanced so smoothly throughout that like from the beginning to the end, the you, the smoke carries that that fruit, that honey vanilla all throughout, and it's it's consistent for me. You know, it's not like okay, fruit on the end and then bow heavy, heavy load of uh, peat. Is the peat there throughout? Is very balanced, very smooth, and it carries that honey vanilla all the way through. Let me take this one last sip of the supernova. All all, the three good drams. Supernova is my favorite. I think because it's more balanced from the flavors from front to end, they're all consistent. To me, it doesn't change up like from the beginning of the palate to the end of the palate. It's consistent through all the way through. You get the vanilla, a little bit, this little bit of honey, but you pick up the smoke all throughout. And you pick up like that, almost like a, like a, I feel like a taste of bourbon influence in there. So honey, vanilla, this little bit of pear, that nice oak, it's almost like a sweet oak, and you get that camp, that campfire smoke all throughout. It's very balanced, has a kick, but it's smooth though. I like them all. So if I had to rate the Supernova one to 10, 10 being the best for me, I give it an eight point five. Um, I give it a solid eight and a half on the uh, Supernova twenty nineteen uh, R bag. So for me, um, I range it like that. So for me, the core reckoning. Uh, as I said earlier, I gave that a seven. This one, right, the uh, the Black Committee release, I give it an eight. And the Supernova 2019 Supernova, I give that a 8.5. So seven, eight, eight point five. They're all very good, man. Obviously, the one I like the uh, the most is the one that's the most expensive and probably hardest to find. So go figure, right? You know, I have I've been looking around. I have not seen a Supernova on a shelf yet. So. And even if I did, I, like I said, the price I don't have to pay for, I, I'd rather just get an Octomore. It's cheaper, more affordable, and this is at least a 10 series. I, I like it more anyway. This is very good, but I still I still think the Octomore is better, though. That's just my personal opinion. The 10, the 10 series is. So anyway, they're all good, man. So Core Reckoning 7, Black Committee Release 2020, uh, that's an 8. And then the uh, Supernova 2019, 8.5. They're all very good drams. These both, the Supernova... Black Committee release are sweet and peters. Um, this one is more balanced. When I mean, that, like I said, it's because the flavors are from front to end. It's consistent all throughout. I like that balance part of it. And that's what works for me. This one is more heavy peated. It's not quite as sweet as these two, definitely. 
Um, so if you're more of just a peat guy and you're really not caring about the sweetness, I think you probably may gravitate more towards the core of bracketing. It doesn't matter what your preference is. Me, I like more of a medium sweet and peat. These two fit the bill. Um, so that's just my personal preference. This is all subjective. But I would say if you try any of them, hit me in the comment block. Tell me what you think. Tell me your opinion of it. Your, you know, what your thoughts are. You know, I, def I definitely, definitely enjoy the hell out of both of them, to say the least. So, um, you know, just let me know what, what you think and we'll go from there. And that being said, yo, this one right here, I'm almost drawing Lynn near my, actually the, my next video will be my hundredth video. So first of all, I want to thank you guys for watching me for the last pretty much two years I've been doing this, man. I just started off as a fan. I used to watch, you know, guys like uh, Whiskey in the Six. Uh, I used to watch, you know, uh, Pete Lovers down in South Florida. I just... I just, that's how I used to learn about different things. Like, cause I didn't want to spend too much money buying something. I didn't know how much it cost. So anyway, I started off as a fan. I just started like, you know what? I got a huge, let, I got a huge collection. I just want to share it. So I started off as a fan, just doing this as fun. And that's, just, that's how I'm still doing it as a fun. So, so this is my 99th uh, video. My next one will be my hundred. So I got some big coming. That being said, I have at least probably, I would say six or seven people within the last three months that have been asking me, drink Cause I've never showed it to you yet, but I've mentioned that I got the RB27, the Red Best 27. I said, Dram, Dram, what are you gonna do it? So I said, I'm waiting. So this is my next, the very next video. I'm gonna give you what you want. I'm gonna give you the RB27. As a matter of fact, I'll give you a quick preview. Normally, I hardly ever do this, but this one right here, the RB27. Yes, sir. I'll give you just a quick, just a very quick. Just I ain't gonna give it all to you. Just, 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 just let you sell it a little bit. It's coming, don't you? It's coming. Hun the very next one is my hundredth. Video. I never thought I would be doing this many videos, but man, I just fun for me. I thank you guys for supporting me, giving me your love, your affections, give me some opinions, give some things I did know and didn't know. I thank all y'all for that, man. It's, it's fun for me. So you guys are like my drinking partners. You're just not physically here with me, man. So I appreciate that, man. Hundred uh, video. I'm gonna do something big, you know. So it's, I'm gonna give you that. I'm gonna give you more too. That just that, the RB27, the Red Breast 27, the Irish really That's gonna be just a part of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do more than just that. But just to give you a little tail of it, just to keep you waiting, that's going to be a part of it, man. So I thank y'all. In the comment box, uh, I don't push it much. It's not a big deal. But if you choose to help support the channel, uh, I do have a Cash App Patreon that you can help and support if you choose to. If you feel I earned it, uh, either way, just give me your time and give me your comments. It's, it's, that's enough for me. I really appreciate y'all. I, I really do, man. So I'm going to be doing a 100 review uh, video coming very soon. Look out for that, man. Uh, I definitely enjoyed this. This is the Arbeck. So hopefully you got something out of it. If you guys are Arbeck fans or if you're looking for something new that's peated, if you've never had an Arbeck line, check it out, man. It, they definitely got some stuff from the core record, the Uga Daughter, N.O. to these. These are hard to find, like these two samples. But be that as it may, man, it's definitely good stuff. So thank you for your time, man. Signing off, man. I really appreciate y'all, man. Drams on deck, yes, sir. <laughs>